So it's Tuesday evening and uh, some post work activity on the press again. This time I'm going to start building something rather than uh, cleaning things and renovating. So last night I painted the metalwork for the press, but uh, I'll come back to that in another video. I'm going to give it a second coat this evening. Uh, but now I'm going to start uh, building a new kind of base plate for inside the press. Um, this doesn't feel too bad actually, but it just looks really ugly and uh, basically I don't I don't trust it. Um, I think I mentioned in an earlier video this would have been sitting in the bottom of the press and after the flooding that the press went through, uh, this was sitting in the mud probably for quite some time, damp and uh, it just doesn't look nice. So it's oak, uh, oak can stand up to a lot, but I've got um, floorboards which are around the same thickness and um, I'm going to basically build a, build a new one. Um, so I'm going to take some of the spare boards I had over and uh, 20 millimeters thick solid oak and I'm going to run them through the thickener uh, which is sitting there in the corner to take off the top layer because um, they were pre-oiled when I got them uh, so just take off the top millimeter or so and uh, then there's no more oil and uh, just cut to size and uh, I might just leave the tongue and groove and uh, glue some of them together and uh, I'm going to try and replicate basically exactly what what's here so they're all around the same thickness width is good and underneath then uh, they had these channels cut to allow some of the, the juice to flow through uh, so I'll get the uh, router out and do something similar so uh, yeah, let's see how far we get and uh, what it looks like in a little while. So next step is through. I uh, glued boards together, planed them down, glued them together uh, to form one surface and uh, scribed a semicircle for each half. And uh, this bit that's gonna come off here, uh, I'll reuse then underneath uh, for the supports. And the original was kind of like this, the narrowest part was uh, on the inside, so to say. And I'm guessing it's so that uh, you wouldn't have a very thin kind of bit at the edge uh, that might give under the pressure. Uh, I'm going to cut the hole first before doing anything else, uh, while I've got kind of uh, space to, to, to hang that off, because if I saw it off, it'll, I won't get a grip. Um, this hole saw is a little bit bigger than the original. Uh, the next one I have down is a little bit too small, so I'm sure that's fine. Kind of just more juice will come out I guess so uh, yeah cut the holes and uh, then I'll saw the round and uh, then prepare the, the lats underneath while that was all hardening uh, I also went and painted uh, some more of the metal work uh, so the, the rod for turning the screw and the catches for holding the basket together I painted red uh, one for a bit of contrast two because they're the bits that might get lost and it'd be easier to find when they're red <laughs> that's my crazy reasoning anyway next step coming up so yeah they're back into the uh the old vices um i was rushing things a little bit it's quite cold at the moment so the glue isn't setting as uh, quick as it normally does it's quick set um so when i took it out to to sew those holes in it uh, broke apart so anyway resetting them now and uh using the time wisely and i've marked out where all the holes should be and what I'll do now is I'll just fix some temporary lats onto them, screw it in, and uh, then I can take them out of the vise and uh, cut around the circles and we're good to go then. So we're fast forwarding a little bit here. It's the next day, so I stopped yesterday evening, uh, partially finished, uh, had to eat something with the family. And uh, this evening after work, I came out and finished the base plate of the press so I tried to mimic as close as I could the original uh, I mentioned and the bit earlier the holes a little bit bigger I used the router around the edges to give it a bit of a smoother finish uh, under is not so pretty perhaps as the well now it's prettier I guess but uh, maybe not as pretty as that was that was much neater but I didn't have a router fitter that uh, had quite the same uh, curve let's say but anyway it's uh it's functional and uh i'm pretty pleased so let's just go and put it in outside and i also started reassembling the basket so that sits at the bottom and the basket uh reassembling now um 
I mentioned before that I it's a bit dark outside now so I painted it green that looks really black uh, but it's actually green and uh, the machinery <laughs> it's a bit too dark for sure I'll do another segment later uh, to show this but I'm gonna put this back together again now uh, so I just got the uh, pivot here for the uh, there's a spring that goes on here that controls the the ratchet uh, so that goes back and forth and uh, clicks onto the teeth in this gear wheel here so that you can basically uh, advance it or bring it backwards. Anyway, I'm going to stop this segment now because it's just way too dark and uh, I'm going to put it all together and then uh, maybe in the morning uh, we'll take a, take a look at it. So it got too dark outside to really show this thing in action but I put it together and put it on the press and it worked great. Uh, a little bit of Vaseline to, to goo it up. Um, but basically this is the, the screw itself uh, with, with threaded insert that goes on top of the uh, the, the screw of the press. Uh, this is attached to the, the base plate uh, which provides the pressure and the base plate is basically hanging off this. Uh, the base plate doesn't have thread itself so this is rotating around on the, on the threads uh, and pushing it up or down and it's uh, hanging off with the uh, this attachment here which I usefully painted red to give it a bit of artistic accent and um, once you've kind of quickly screwed it down you can put a bar in these holes and uh, kind of do it quickly until you get some pressure and once the pressure's on it then you'll be using uh, this ratchet system and to make the ratchet system engage there's this uh, spring now um, this by right should be under there's a little pin in here uh, you can see the end of it there and it obviously popped out at some stage uh, so I need to get that pin out somehow <laughs> with brute force and get this bit of the spring underneath but once that's sitting there uh, you hook it over this little stud there and that means that the ratchet is pushing in one direction and um, doesn't work under pressure but you get the idea yeah? so you got a bar through this to give pressure and you can go in one direction and then when you want to reverse it uh, you would then bring this around, hook it on the other side, and then the ratchet will be pushed in the other direction. It's a nice little system. Um, God, yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna get that pin out because that's embedded in there. Uh, so the other stuff that I mentioned that I painted the other day, oh, last night I finished painting it, so this is the, the bar for, for driving it. It's uh, also metal, uh, so you can, as I mentioned, put it in the quick heavy that is uh, or it goes into the ratchet and uh, off you go it's about a meter long and uh, then the catches for the basket itself uh, oh 7.30 uh, the, the catches for the basket uh, I did red as well so that's uh, a little bit of a contrast also because red means danger and uh, I kind of hurt myself with this because they're a bit bloody sharp so you notice them anyway so I'm going to park it for tonight and uh, tomorrow I just need to do a bit of sanding, uh, a couple of bits that I forgot, uh, put the rest of the basket together and it's finished and then we'll see what it looks like in the daytime. <laughs>